The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and let me take and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, put on your apron, and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. speak to you in the name of the one God who is Father and Son and Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who among us has not prayed that prayer? Increase our faith. Who among us has not prayed that prayer or something similar? Increase our faith. You know, sometimes we ask for help at those moments when we're most in crisis. I remember when I was taking the SAT exams, and at that time it was the most critical bottleneck on the path to any uh, kind of college experience, for at least the class that I was experiencing at, at the time that I graduated. And so a lot of people who are taking those tests are often under stress to begin with, let alone the anxiety around testing uh, and knowledge and education and all that comes with it and, and, and pressure from peers, pressure from parents. And I usually handle uh, testing pretty well. Uh, I enjoy the process. I don't really hold a lot, of, uh, put a lot at stake on the outcome of a test. But I have some friends that were very anxious about those exams. And when we were in this room taking the test, where there were people from our school and other schools, and uh, it, you know, it's a big testing room, and we were from a really tiny school, so this was really interesting to be a thrust into this world of like a hundred, a sea of hundreds and hundreds of desks. And I was paying attention to what was going on around me. And a couple of seats over, there was a person who was at the end of their rope. They were sweating. They were starting to feel sick. They were uh, just talking to themselves, talking through, you know, we can do it, it's gonna be okay. They, you know, and telling themselves all of the calming things that maybe their parents or friends had told them to say to get into a calm space, but it wasn't really working. The person right next to them uh, was somebody who had compassion on them and was trying to comfort them. And they said, well, why don't you pray? And so obviously they were from a Christian tradition of some sort because they talked about uh, Jesus and they talked about their church. Uh, and they said, you know, that's, that's what I always do. And the student who was struggling said, we, we don't go to church. I don't, I don't really know how. I don't know what that is. And she said, she talked him through it. She said, it's really simple. You just pray to God for what you need. And he said one of the most wonderful things uh, that I could think of. He, he asked her, do you think it will help? And she said, I don't know, but you can try. And he said, he repeated back what she had said. I don't know, but I can try. And he prayed. And he started to be calm. And I do believe in the power of prayer, but what I want to point out is that 
some of the most faithful people are the ones who are struggling the most and searching for God the most in that moment. Those crises of faith, those crises of life, force us into a position where we seek the help that we can't provide for ourselves. We're desperate sometimes. Increase our faith, the disciples asked. Increase our faith. I think that in our tradition, we tend to think of faith as a commodity, almost. As something that we can get from God. That God will hand it out when we need it. Maybe not like a get-out-of-jail card, but maybe some extra resources when we're struggling. As if there's something that we can accumulate. That if we don't have enough, we can get more. But if we have enough for now, we can maybe keep piling on for when we need it later. And at some point, we tend to treat faith as this object to obtain for ourselves. Something that exists outside of us that we can capture or pray for and receive. Or maybe practice enough till we're really good at getting it. As if it's something that's separate from us. But Jesus has this interesting response to the disciples when they ask for him to increase our faith. He doesn't do it, does he? He doesn't do it. Let's be clear about that in this account. Jesus does not respond to their request or their demand by giving them what they ask for. Instead, he says, if you have faith the size of a, what? Mustard. mustard seed. The size of a mustard seed. You could do the unimaginable. He says that you could ask this mulberry plant to be planted in the ocean. He's telling them that you can do this ridiculous thing to remind them that God does impossible things. His response when they asked for him to increase their faith was to remind them that the smallest amount of faith already does the biggest amount of God's work. So he already starts off by disavowing them of that idea that faith is this quantifiable thing that you can accumulate or get or that you need more of. And think about for a second what they've been do hearing as we have for the past few weeks uh, from these parables that Jesus has been talking about. Jesus hasn't been talking about uh, if you pray, you'll get what you need. He talks about the kingdom of God stepping into our world, and it looks like something in our behavior towards our neighbors. It looks like us not focusing on accumulating things for ourselves, but sharing it with the community. It looks like God seeking and preferring to focus on those who are lost and those who are broken and those who are outside, rather than the people who have already Maybe in the terms that we're talking about today, having found faith. God continues to talk through Jesus of this upside down world of the kingdom that is unlike the world that we operate in normally. And it demands that we see ourselves participating in God's kingdom as if those rules are very different from the rules of the people around us. And they find it hard to understand what that means. And so they say, increase our faith. And he says, no. You've already got it. And even though there's that difficult to grapple with explanation of the slave owner and the slaves, the point at the end 
is that we step into our responsibilities in the world as if we are worthless slaves. Slaves that have no selling value. That's what that term means. There's nothing linked to their freedom. You don't have to pay for them uh, in the free market. They are on their own. They're independent, if you will, but in that household. Those slaves understand where they are at that point. They're linked to the household that they belong to, just like you, as a person of faith, are linked to the household of God already. Faith isn't something to get more of. You already have, from the very creation of the planet, been blessed by God with goodness, and been invited into a relationship with God that acts in the world in a particular way. You don't need to get more of it. Sometimes we need to turn on that light switch so that we see the reality that God is here with us. That God's presence is one that invites us into the world invites us to reorder our priorities to match God's priorities, to reorder our relationships to match the love that God sends out into the world. Think about how you hear Jesus' voice in this story. When they say, increase our faith, Jesus, and he says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to that mulberry tree, be planted in the ocean and it would be done. What does his voice sound like to you? Do you ever imagine that? When you hear Jesus speaking, do you imagine him speaking? Or are they just words? Because I think here it's important to think about how he's delivering this message. Because our relationship with this whole passage is a little bit problematic. It would be very easy for us to take that phrase, increase our faith, and take some scissors and cut it out of the Bible so we have this little strip of paper, and then roll that little paper up, bake it in a cookie so it's a fortune cookie ready to crack open at any time. Increase our faith. But that does not tell the truth of what Jesus wants us to see and how Jesus treats faith. It's not a magic potion, is it? It's the reality of our life. It's the reality of our experience with God. And so when they say, increase our faith, he could sound very sarcastic here. Well, if you just, if you only if you just had the faith of a mustard seed, you could do this great thing. But poor you, you don't. I don't think that's what it sounds like. Do you? Davis, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could do the unimaginable. I think it's an encouraging tone. I think it's a teacher and the disciples, a teacher and students. I think it's this person who believes that they already have the skills that they need to survive, the skills that they need to thrive, the skills that they need to experience God in a real way, and with tenderness, and with hope, and with encouragement. Jesus says, you've already got it. Now, the hard part is what we do with what we've got. Because if we ask for God to increase our faith, what we're really saying is that we feel like we don't have what we need. We feel like there's something more being asked of us. It means that we're in this moment of crisis where we need something else. And God's saying it's not faith. Because remember, you were born, you were created, you were made to operate in this system that God has created. So what are we looking for? What do you hope God provides for you today? 
I know that in our church circumstances, we say that a lot. We don't use these words to increase our faith. But there are moments when we come to a struggle point. It's happened to every faith community and keeps happening to faith communities. That's how faith communities operate. They notice that there's a crisis, they respond, and they keep on growing and moving towards God. But maybe we recognize that our support of the LGBTQ community, for instance, that we have been an open and affirming church for decades, and that here in Lynchburg for a while now, and yet, how do we proclaim the gospel in a way that speaks that truth? Increase our faith. We already have what we need, but we're not necessarily sure how to best apply it. We see people who are hungry all around us and who want to help, and we have thoughts of, well, we'd love to have a dinner. We'd love to feed people on a regular basis. But every time the idea comes up, we don't really have the energy to do it. Increase our faith. We have what we need, but we're not sure which direction to turn. We're a faith community that has been here for a long time, and through struggles and also joys and triumphs, we recognize that at this time in our life, with the world changing, with church changing, with our own community changing, there might be a new different future ahead of us that we haven't experienced before. And we have no idea what that's going to look like. Increase our faith, we might cry. And in all of those situations, in every single one, what does Jesus say? You've already got it. If you have even a drop of faith, if you have even a breath of faith, you have an opportunity to live in what Jesus called the kingdom of God that is breaking out in the world around you. If you are in pain, if you are broken, if you are confused, if you are in crisis, you have what you need. And this isn't uh, don't worry about it kind of speech. But this is turning our attention from something that we treat as something to buy, something to get. Jesus doesn't lead us to the faith ATM. Jesus drops us in community where we carry one another and keep moving forward into the world. So I will tell you, if you're praying this prayer along with the disciples, if you're at a point in your personal life, in your community life, in your relationships with anybody, and you're saying, increase my faith, be careful what you pray for. Because there just might be an expectation that you see God doing the unimaginable in the world around you. And then who? Hopefully right where God is. Hopefully watching the kingdom of heaven break out. Just like weeds growing through the cracks of the street. And that might be the very answer to our prayer. Thanks be to God.